Yo, 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 what is up, you guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some piano uh, editor type stuff, some a lot of key commands and basic workflow type things. So this video is gonna be mostly for beginners that are kind of just people that are looking to get into Ableton for the first time or um, people that just kind of want to know some more key commands. But for the long time Ableton users, there's also some kind of uh, advanced stuff that you might not know about or things you just never really tried out before so there's kind of something for everyone in here i wrote a little list of the things i wanted to talk about because i recorded this video and i left a few things out so now i wrote a list and now the information is just going to be scattered so you know the format that i recorded it before I'm not going to follow that so I'm just going to wing it now with my list so the first thing i want to talk about is just basic easy stuff like uh uh control one two and three so that's just for our grids so uh, let's look up here, not this one down here. It'll work on both of them. It's just that my website stuff is blocking it because of the little website things I put there. So let's just look here at the grid. And so control one and two will make our grid bigger and smaller. So control one will make it smaller. So uh, let's click here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit more or just uh, control two to make it bigger. So control two will make it, as you see, bigger. Control one makes it smaller and control three will be triplet grid. So control three for the triplet grid and triplet grids are so useful for so many different genres of dance music. So those are just really good key commands to know. And of course, if we zoom in more, we can make our grid even smaller. So I'm not talking about this tool now. Um, you, this is uh, what's known as the zoom tool here in Ableton and You'll see this in a lot of different places. So, you know, if like, uh, l let's take something like, uh, let's find a rack that's pretty long. Let's just open everything up in here. So you, we also see another kind of zoom tool here, but we can't actually like shrink it up and down. We can just scroll through this long chain. So every time we see these windows, we can just move around quickly and and using that with control one, two, and three with your grid sizes is actually going to help you a lot. So again, when you want to zoom in on something and make sure you really get it close and then adjust your grid accordingly, that really lets you just focus on an area. And then of course, just double click it to zoom right back out. So let me kind of just make my grid a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So now let's talk about the views. So if, uh, I like to use two uh, monitors with Ableton. So let me bring down my second window here. So to see your second screen or to have a second window of Ableton, you just go Control Shift W. So Control Shift W, which would be Command Shift W. Anytime I say Control on PC, that means Command for Mac. So just keep that in mind. So I don't have to keep repeating that. So uh, again, Control Shift W um, will just bring me my second screen. So I actually like to have my MIDI, actually give me a sec here, I don't know where my recording software just went. There we go, kind of lost it for a second. So um, uh, yeah, I actually like to have my MIDI right here on the second screen. So um, this usually will be up here on my second monitor where I'm pointing at, and this is the monitor you can see right now. So I like to have my MIDI up here. So uh, right now it's there. So let's say I wanted to actually see my plugins instead of my, uh, MIDI. So you can see the instrument rack and all the plugins in there right here in the other view. So shift tab will switch those. So now I see the instrument rack here and the MIDI over here. So that's really useful for me because I always like to have the MIDI here. And of course, if I hit tab, that's not going to move this. So it's just going to switch the arrangement view with this view. So tab to switch those views. And you notice the MIDI stays in the same spot. So again, shift tab, to switch you know instrument rack with midi and tab just to switch the view altogether and of course that is just really useful so you know if i uh, have this screen only and i want to see this screen there we go and so let me get rid of the second screen so let me place that back up here for me and let me tab to see this and shift tab to see some midi there we go so i i feel like that's pretty useful i feel like uh, with any DAW, you have to be comfortable with the layout and the look. And I think that right there is just one of the big things that a lot of people seeing Ableton for the first time don't get or don't like. So just knowing tab and shift tab is just one of the 
is just going to make you a lot more comfortable with this. And so also just to kind of, you know, toggle your views like that when you have a second screen out with the shift tab. So um, let's go into now some basic stuff with the envelopes and velocities. So to quickly um, just tweak our velocities, we can just um, select, make our selection, or if we want to just grab some notes, we can just hold shift while selecting some notes. And, and if we want to unselect some notes, we just click right back on those with shift again. And so now once we made our selection, we can just hold the alt key, which is the option key on Mac. And we can just drag this up and down now, and that will, uh, you know, we can just now arrange our velocities the way we want. So you notice this uh, velocity stuff mostly with ve velocity sensitive instruments and synths, and mostly with pianos and, and, and drum samples, you notice velocities a lot more. So um, velocities really are just super useful. So that's a quick way to quickly just, uh, you know, change that with the Alt key. So just like that, super important to know. Um, you know, because I feel like just selecting one note at a time, dragging up and down, that's just, that's no way to do it. There's a quick way to do it, and that is it. So now let's go into the envelope boxes. So right here, you'll notice it, uh, that little E at the bottom of the clip. So you can just change your clip color here quickly if you wanted to, change your signature, and the groove pull stuff, which I'll get to in a sec. So let's click on the envelope boxes, and... Really, mostly everyone comes in here to do the same thing, is just to do crazy pitch bending effects. But you can do other stuff uh, in here as well, but let's just do a pitch bend. So let's maybe zoom in a bit on the first uh, section of this. And let's make the grid slightly bigger. Or yeah, there we go. So let's just set it to one over one. And now let's get the pencil tool out with Command B on Mac and Control B on PC. So Control B, let's just draw this little pitch bend effect right here. And with the Alt key, we can also bend our curves. So that's kind of new to Ableton now. Uh, it's, a, I think, Ableton 8 or 9 that introduced it. It was probably 9. So now we can just do curve automation like that. So now if this plays out, you'll hear the, the notes bend like so. So that's mostly what everyone comes into the envelopes for, but you can do so much more of this kind of automation right here. And the great thing about this is that everything that happens inside the envelopes boxes stays on the clip. So it's not going to be on your timeline. That is something that stays with the clip. So, you know, that's pretty useful as well. And now let's get back out of that. And let's look at maybe something that the longtime Ableton users don't know about. Or maybe most people just kind of just never heard of. Um, which is holding zero on a selection. So if I hit zero on these selected notes, it's going to mute them. So you see how they're all gray and transparent, deactivated basically. Um, that is just muting notes. So I've seen this before in Pro Tools where you could mute notes on your in, in the MIDI editor. So this is just a really great writing tool. So you know if I'm working with some really fast arrangements or I want to make a gating type effect, um, this might be a cool way to do it. And other than that, it's just a really great writing tool. So just hitting zero on the number pad uh, will get do that for you. So if you're on a laptop, it might not work if your number pad is just kind of weird. So, you know, this is also great if you're writing chords and stuff. You know, you could just mute the top note or whatever note you don't like or whatever's sticking out to you. Mute it and then just try to, you know, put in some other notes. You can mute those. So it's a lot better than just deleting and re-adding and undoing your work. You can just mute the ones you don't want to hear and it just stays there, it won't play. So that's a really great thing about this. So let's kind of now look at these other stuff right here in the notes section. So we got like double time, half time, reverse, invert, legato, and loop. So those are ones I use quite often. So let's just start off with half time and double time. So let's just double click here. So. Uh, double time is going to make it twice as fast. So what that means is it's going to make it short. So if this is a 16 bar selection right here, which it is, um, double time is going to make this six, it's going to play this twice as fast. So 16 bars will be eight bars. So just like that makes it twice as fast and eight bars to four bars if I hit it again. And you kind of get the idea. It just makes it twice as fast. And half time is actually going to make it twice as long. So it's going to, it's uh, it's just going to drag it out. So it's going to 
take twice as long to play out. So if this is 8 bars, it will go to 16 bars once I hit this. So, um, you know, it kind of just does this sort of thing to it, where it just kind of drags it out like this. So I always like these little markers here in Ableton where, you know, I can just snap things to the way I want them to be. And it's just a really useful thing right here. So this is actually a great way to kind of show you what the reverse tool does. So the reverse tool kind of does a, like a vertical flip where it kind of just does this to it. So the beginning notes will be at the end. So if we just take this here and place it there and then take this marker past the end marker, just like that, it does this sort of flip. So that's what the reverse is going to do to this. So, you know, instead of kind of just doing that or, you know, doing all this stuff, you know, we'll just make that same selection, hit the reverse button. So now this note will be somewhere over here and this note will be somewhere over here. So reverse, just like that. And invert is actually going to just do a horizontal flip. So it's just going to do this sort of thing. So it's going to take it, wha-bam. So these bottom notes here are going to be somewhere at the top and the top notes are going to be somewhere at the bottom. So let's invert it like that. So both of those tools are actually really useful for when I'm, uh, usually I find I use those the most when I'm writing melodies and stuff like that. And I just kind of playing around with that top line and stuff like that. And it's just a cool way to kind of just quickly test out your MIDI and um, it, it leads to new ideas or shows you different results and you can get interesting stuff like that. So I do use it as a writing tool. And I also use Lingato kind of for the similar uh, for similar stuff. So, you know, sometimes I'll play stuff on a keyboard and I'll just want to snap notes to the beginning of the next notes. So instead of dragging this out or, you know, hitting uh, shift left arrow or right arrow, which will just kind of move it according to the selection, I'll just hit the Lingato button and it will just snap to the beginning of the next notes. So Lingato is super useful. I've seen this, uh, I think, in Logic... Uh, you could just right click for force lingato, but uh, it's much easier here where you could just select the notes you want to stretch out to the beginning of the next notes, hit lingato. And last, I was going to talk about the control, uh, the loop in here. So I actually use loop for several things, so I'll kind of talk about those. So let's just, uh, we see this little box right here that we also see up here in our main window. Uh, let's kind of go back to the MIDI. Uh, so if we hit the, so we have the same commands that work here as well. So control will give us our left bracket and control shift will give us the right bracket. So let's just make this short. So this is kind of how I use it. So sometimes when I'm writing chords, I'll just hit the loop button and I'll just listen to this section over and over and over and in preview mode, adjust it so that I can kind of you know, get those uh, chords right. So um, you know, that's kind of one way I use that loop tool. And you notice, um, actually, let's go over here. You notice when I hit that loop tool, that's going to repeat off those notes um, that I loop off. So if I select the last one and start looping from there, you notice that there's these lines that come in and indicates that's looping. So now I can just drag this on and on and it will loop. And that's actually a really cool way to lead into a buildup from like a chord or something. So you just kind of loop that last note and just make that a part of your buildup. And that's a really cool effect to do as well. So I use loop for those kind of things right there. And now let's finally get into the groove pool. So, uh, you know, again, clicking on these two pieces of bacon, we'll see the groove pool. And I already have this crescendo thing on there. So I didn't even notice to take it off earlier. Um, so again, the quick way I get to the groove pool is I just hit the hot swap feature to see the library of uh, groove pool things I could use. So there's some cool stuff like crescendos, uh, quantize, uh, some percussion, some swings, some hip hop stuff. So you can just grab all these and drag and drop them in here and then adjust all their other settings. And so then you can just bring them into clips by select, uh, clicking on the clip and then just going into the groove and selecting which groove pool you want. So I had the crescendo four bars. So that's a good example maybe to show you with piano. So if, let's just play the beginning of this. So now let's select the four bar crescendo. So that means it's going to start off really soft and by the end of the four bars it's going to be much louder and then 
at this note right here, it's gonna get soft again and repeat that crescendo process again. So I added this on to just show you guys the crescendo. I don't actually use this when writing or for this part, I should say. So let's now listen to this again and it's gonna start off really soft. So you heard how it just went really soft right there. So that's just one of the groove pools you can use. So for the long time Ableton users that know that the groove pool is there, but just never really bothered with it, just know you can do that kind of stuff. And the quantizing stuff is actually really cool. So sometimes when I have something that's playing in eighth notes, I'll add a one over four, uh, um, a quarter note quantized to it, and I'll just hear that a different version of it. So you can get kind of crazy with these groove pools. So let's just close that down. And let's go to more key commands. So uh, let's go into all these shift up and down, left and right key commands. So shift up and down will bring stuff up and down an octave. So shift up will bring it up an octave. Shift down will bring it down an octave. And then shift uh, left and right will make it longer and shorter. So left and right, shift. And then so you kind of get the idea of all the different stuff you can do with uh, shift left and right, up and down arrows. And of course, up and down arrows and the left and right will just basically move it around. So without shift, you can just use it to quickly move around. And of course, if we go control one again, make our grid a little bit smaller or give us more grid spaces, uh, you can just kind of get more exact where you place this. So up and down arrows and then shift up and down arrows to kind of tweak the MIDI is really useful stuff right there. And, uh, Let's see, well, I guess the last thing I wanna talk about is just the fold section. So I've talked about this in other videos. So what the fold section is, I'm not sure what other DAWs have a feature like this, but the fold section just takes, if there's a MIDI note on it, it will be included. So anything that doesn't have a MIDI note on it, like let's take the G uh, sharp right here. We notice that there's no note on this. So when we fold it, we're not going to see that note. That note's not there because it's not in my scale. So let me actually delete everything that's uh, in my scale here. I put these there, so I'll, we'll make a new one. We'll make a new F major scale right now. And so let's unfold this. So now we just see only these notes. So if I fold this again, we're only going to see all the all these notes only. So this is actually a great writing tool, and it's very useful. So uh, you know, the, I think the best use of this is just to learn how to write your scales. And I have a video on that as well. Um, you know, how to write major and minor scales. And let's find the next F1. So so we're, we're gonna go from F0 to F1, and we're gonna write a major scale. So I don't know how many of you guys know your majors and minor scales uh, by memory, but I just kind of memorize the pattern to always just know how to do it. So one whole step, another whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then half step to end it. That's seven notes from here to there, and we ended on an F. So I did it right. So um, now I'll just duplicate that. Shift down arrow to put it down an octave, duplicate that. Shift up arrow twice to bring it up two octaves, duplicate, bring it up another octave, duplicate, shift up arrow. And now I have a few octaves of an F major scale. So now if I fold this, every note that I see in here is in the key of F major. So literally there's no note I can play in here that would be out of key. Um, so now that lets you write just more freely with the pencil tool or you know however you want to draw this in. So um, I always recommend just kind of taking your all your scale stuff, pushing it to the left, the kind of darker grade area of Ableton. So this is the beginning of your clip. This is what plays. This is what you hear. This isn't kind of like another region of that where you're it doesn't play at all. So that's uh, a super useful. And so you really learn how you should learn how to write your scales and stuff. So also that's good for ear training too. Anytime people send me demos and stuff like that, you know, I'm always, you know, even if they played a note, like a note out of scale for like half a second or even less, I'll quickly spot it and it just sticks out like a sore thumb. So it really trains your ears when you use a lot of when you just kind of get used to working in, in scales. So um, that's really it, you guys. So of course, a lot of info in here, a lot of key commands, and it's all kind of scattered. So uh, 
Thanks, guys, for watching. And uh, let me know what else you guys want to see. And, of course, lights.